Hi folks, good afternoon to you. I am Gabriel Hamans, my wife Shelley is on the other side of the camera today. We're so glad to be back with you in this broadcast, which we do every Sunday. Of course, last week we were out of town, and so we actually did not have a broadcast for the first time in so long. Anyway, welcome back. We're sure glad to have you with us. The Lord has amazing things for us today. I pray that He would touch you and open your heart and get you ready for what the Lord wants to give you today. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for all that you are, everything that you are saying by your Spirit, that you are bringing forth by your Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would stir up and pour in hunger into the hearts of your people, the church, that they will find the spiritual hunger and passion that they need and require to fulfill their destiny in this end time plan of God that is right now on the doorstep. Thank you, Lord. We pray for the touch of God. We pray for healing. We pray for blessing. We pray for transformation of people's lives by your Spirit as they watch this program. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I know I've said this a lot, but I want to say it to you again. Um, sometimes people may not realize that. I don't just get up here and you know, have some notes and go. I mean, I have the whole book, God's Golden Glory Revolution, but I, every time, and this has been the way for 38 years, every time before I minister, I get quiet before the Lord, ask Him what He wants me to say and how He wants me to say it, and give it to me. So therefore, I take great care every time that I minister to hear from the Lord. Every minister should do this. Every pastor, teacher, prophet, whoever you are, you should separate yourself, be quiet, get in God's presence, and hear from Holy Spirit. And this is the reason why so many people are blessed through this ministry and have been in the past. Because I bring you the pure article of God, the pure message from the Lord. We are just people, fallible like anybody else, imperfect, so am I. But I bring you, every time that you're going to see me on a camera, or at any time that you may see me preaching in a church somewhere, you can be assured that I am not just preaching to you a good message. I got the fresh download from the Lord, and I get a fresh impartation from the Lord every time before I minister. Sometimes He'll give me part of it before, and the rest while I'm preaching, sometimes a little different. But when I open my mouth, the message that comes out is not me, it's not this ministry, it's the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And today again, I have a powerful word from the Lord for you. And pray that your ears be open to hear this. And that your heart may receive what the Lord says. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Having said that, I want to make an announcement to you. I want to explain something about Facebook. We use Facebook, you know, for the broadcast here and so on. And many people watch me from different parts of the world. And then they write... And they want to connect with the ministry son, which is great. Last week, somebody called me 2 o'clock in the morning here, a pastor from Kenya. And I want you to know that personally, I cannot do personal Facebook. It would be impossible for me. So many people, ministers, pastors, Christians, get up there, hello, how are you? What's the weather like? I don't have time for that. I can't. I can't. I just finished a book that I wrote from the presence of God, True Christianity. I've just started on a new book. The Lord has given me three more to write this year. I have to pour myself into everything the Lord says. We're going to get these three new books done this year. Hallelujah. They're going to be everyone about the same size as what true Christianity is, which will be out very soon. Now it's with the printers. We can, can, can hardly wait to, to bring this to you. And then in addition to uh, true Christianity, three more books that the Lord spoke to me about and said, you've got to write these ones this year, and my wife is going to write one concerning her fellowship and the secrets and the blessings of fellowship that she experiences with Holy Spirit, relating those wonderful experiences to the body of Christ. So, please understand that. I'm going to keep saying this. I cannot go in there and answer everybody individually. I understand people want to talk to us. It's just not possible. Go to our website at GabrielHaymansMinistries.com and send us an email. Now, oftentimes when this happens, people will call or people will write and say, Do you have any ministerial, uh, ministry materials for us? And I would say yes. There's probably close to 100 videos on our website at GabrielHaymansMinistries.com. Furthermore, if you go to YouTube and subscribe 
to our YouTube channel, you will find in excess of 300, maybe in excess of 400 messages. I have on YouTube and on my website probably, probably the equivalent of five to six years of intense ministry preparation and truth. And the Lord said to me back in 2012, I want you to start doing this to make these materials available to people around the world because when we get close to the time that the fire revival is going to explode, people are going to need these messages. And so we make everything available on the website, of, of, of our videos that is, for free. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good news. Amen. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit today about success and about destiny. And they really are interchangeable terms in the church world. See, what are we doing right now? Now, when we began to, when we uh, brought the Golden Glory book, when, when we published that and brought that to the church, the Lord said to me, this is the handbook. By the way, I have, I have it right here. God's Golden Glory Revolution. Hallelujah. The Lord said to me, this is the handbook. This is the instructions manual for these last days for the church. Now, I did not write in this book what I wanted or what I thought was good. I sat for three years from 2017 to 2020, sat in the Lord's presence almost every day and let Him speak to me, let Him talk to me, let Him tell me in detail what it is that He wanted. Because what Holy Spirit wanted with this book is what Jesus and the Father wanted with this book. And so this book is therefore not of me or from me, it's from the Lord. Your entire future, your entire destiny, your success and the outcome of a blessed life depends on God's end time plan, which is recorded in this book, God's Gold and Glory Revolution. Now with true Christianity, because a lot of people, it's amazing, they, they miss what's in here or they don't read it, I don't know. And so the Lord said to me, write a book and very specifically and abbreviate it and bring the truth of true Christianity to the people. And like I've just said, this book is almost available. We're getting there as soon as we can, hallelujah. And you're going to have this available. So that the church can see, that you can see what needs to change. See folks, you have to understand this. The church always wants to live by quick fixes. This is not about quick fixes. There is no quick fix to get us ready and prepared in spirit and in mind, for this last day outpouring of God. There's no quick fix. Your entire life as a Christian has been lived within the system and the environment of what we now call Antichrist Christianity. All the doctrines, all the practices, all the rituals, all the works programs, all the things of the flesh have been so branded into the lives of people that... Uh, that they're so blinded. Now, many of you begin to see the truth. So, and it's not going to take just a few weeks or a month to change this. We are promoting, we are propagating a radical replacement of the Christianity that we've lived by, replaced by a new one. We are proclaiming, excuse me, proclaiming a revolution. We did not say when we wrote this book, Revolution, just for fun. It's not about fun. It is the reality. The reality is this. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has been bound for 1930 years by the Antichrist spirit and has been ruled by the Antichrist spirit and his demons for 1930 years. This is the truth. And so now the Lord has exposed this to us now we're able to say, okay, here is the truth. But in order to replace a system of Christian religion that has ruled your life, all your life as a Christian, it's not going to take a week or a month or six months. This is a process. That's why we call it the war of transformation. To transform the church, you and me, from the system of antichrist Christianity to the apostolic truth of true New Testament Christianity through God's Holy Spirit. That's what we're doing. Now, regardless of how long it takes us to get there, this is a journey of discovery. We don't just bring a few changes here. We propagate the destruction and annihilation of the system that we've lived under and a total transformation to the truth 
of the New Testament, the apostolic truth of the new covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now understand this. The church is a C. The church is Antichrist Christianity. The church is under the control of the Antichrist spirit and his demons. Has always been since about AD 90. 90. So what we're doing is something that has never been done before. Now, of course, the Reformation came and started uh, with Martin Luther uh, back in 1517. And many changes have taken place in the church since then. But these changes were like superficial or on the surface. They were not deep. They were not comprehensive. Why? Because the system has never been replaced. The system of church or antichrist Christianity has never been I exposed, identified, and replaced by the leadership of the church. Alarmingly and shockingly. Even now, today, that we're 74 years into the last generation, the church is still completely blinded and bound by the Antichrist spirit and the system of false Christianity. Unbelievable. It's just, it's just shocking. So what are we doing? We're doing two things. Number one, through the war of transformation, we intend to attend, we, we're bringing uh, to Christianity with the plan and the purpose of destroying AC, Antichrist Christianity. That's what we're doing. That is what I call the apostolic truth of the last days. So, number one, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing right now. We're in this war. It is a war. You cannot just hear it. You have to participate in this. You cannot just listen to this. You've got to become part of it or not. You know, it's like 1988 all over again. When I came here in 1988, I was so charged. I was so, so filled with the Lord. I was so filled with the mission that He had given me. I was so shocked and changed when He came to me on Sunday, October 19, 1986, and showed me the new revival, the new outpouring of the Spirit is on the threshold. It will begin to happen soon. By the time I got to America... Holy Spirit was poured out upon people. They fall on the floor, laugh, they heal, change, transform. And this went on until this revival finally dissipated and disappeared. But when I came here, at first, of course, you know, just speaking in a few small churches, people didn't know me. And I began to proclaim the new outpouring of God is on the threshold. Get ready. And I would talk to Christians. And they had no clue that we're supposed to have a visitation of God. They had no understanding or collection of the truth, this is 1988, that we were standing at that moment on the threshold of a brand new outpouring of the Spirit of God that would bring a new flow of revival to America and around the world. Had no clue. I would talk to pastors. And, and, and they would say to me, what is this that you're preaching? Uh, what is this message about? What is it? I said, well... It's preparation. This is 1988. We're preparing for the next great outpouring of the Lord, which is going to be a revival of joy, the intoxication of the Spirit, signs and wonders, and we're on the threshold of it. We're right on the very threshold of it now. That was 1988. And pastors would look at me strange. And I would say to them, don't, don't, don't you hear this from the Lord? Has God not spoken to you? Have you not heard Holy Spirit about this? No. I'm not saying there was nobody in America... Not a single person who had not heard from Holy Spirit. But everywhere I went, Christians were completely in the dark about the reality of God that a new revival was about to burst forth upon the scene. Pastors, teachers, prophets, whatever you want to call them, they all look at me strange. What is this message you're bringing? What is this about a new outpouring? And I say, you, you haven't heard that from the Lord? No. I found out they don't hear from the Lord. I found out they don't spend time with the Lord. Pastors, preachers, prophets, no matter what. I found out nobody is talking to the Holy Spirit. I began to learn real quickly that it's very hard to find anybody who is connected with Holy Spirit in a personal way, in a personal relationship. I mean, it starts, the problem starts with the top, with the leadership. That's where the problem started. I would go into churches and talk to pastors about John 14, 15, 16, 17, that Jesus went to the Father and sent us Holy Spirit and how we can have relationship with Him and fellowship and enjoy His presence and walk in His presence and hear from Him and receive revelation in God and say, look at me, he was strange. What are you talking about? 
you know, we, we walk with Jesus. I said, really, where is he? Oh, he's in my heart. Really? You know, he's in our church. We welcome him every Sunday. I said, dummy, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Oh, well, but he's omnipresent. No, he's not omnipresent. He lives in a body. It is a glorified, resurrected spiritual body, but he lives in a body. But Jesus, just like he told his disciples, returned to the Father. He did return to the Father, and he did send us Holy Spirit and the outpouring of Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, on Sunday, June 1st, AD 32, when the church was born in Jerusalem, and he sent us Holy Spirit in person to come and live inside the Spirit. You're a spirit. To come and live inside the Spirit of every person who receive Jesus' salvation. You can't receive Jesus. He's in heaven. You can receive his salvation. There's no other name whereby you can be saved. He's the way, the truth, and the life. But you don't receive the salvation of Jesus by receiving him in person. That is impossible. He's in heaven. You receive the salvation that Jesus has given you. Then the Holy Spirit brings the salvation, that Zoe life of God, into your spirit and recreates your spirit. And then he takes up residence within your spirit. And so when I first came in 88, the Lord said to me, Every church that opens the door to you, go in and teach them relationship with Holy Spirit. John 14 through 17. And during the revival years, the Lord said to me, Every morning teaching session, teach on John 14 through 17. Teach on Holy Spirit. Teach on relationship with Him. Teach uh, about the fact that Jesus is with the Father. Why? Because we were already back then coming against the system. Back then, I didn't see the whole system as I see it now. But I would say, people, what is wrong with you? You cannot have a Christian life without Holy Spirit's involvement. You cannot come to salvation by believing and receiving the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and the Holy Spirit brings it into your heart. You cannot live the Christian life of New Testament life. You cannot live that without the active involvement of the person of Holy Spirit in your life and this is the reason why the system this is the reason why the church has never lived the true christian life it's because it's not based on holy spirit just like you cannot have salvation without the work and the redemption of the lord jesus christ likewise you cannot live and have a true christian life without a relationship and a personal fellowship and a daily walk with the person of Holy Spirit. So, I mean, I was shocked back in 88. And I began to think about, you know, the verse in uh, John, uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's about the most important thing that you could ask the Lord on a daily basis. Holy Spirit, open my ears that I can hear what you are saying to the church. I'm part of the church. Open my ears in my spirit and also in my head, that I may hear what you are saying to the church. See, since Jesus left here, he's never spoken to the church personally. He's spoken to the church through Holy Spirit. Even if you remember this, when John was on the island of Patmos, and Jesus came to him, uh, Revelation 1, and appeared to him in such glory, such power. And so the Lord had a personal message for John, that is Jesus. But once it came time to address the church, Jesus stepped back and Holy Spirit began to speak. The Lord spoke, Holy Spirit spoke to those seven churches in Asia. And at the end of every message given to every one of the churches, it says this, And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What do you mean he who has an ear? He who has an ear to listen. He who has an open ear. He who is in tune with Holy Spirit is what he's saying. This is amazing. And so Holy Spirit has spoken to the church forever, all the time since Jesus left this earth. But people are not in fellowship with him. So now, this is a journey. We are on a journey. We are on a journey to do these two things. Number one, to kill Antichrist Christianity and to remove that spirit of the Antichrist and his demons from our lives. The reason why so many Christians are still blinded to this, many of them have read my book, they get nothing out of it. They're still blinded 
You have to do this one thing if you have not yet done so. You have to sit down and use your authority as a Christian in the name of Jesus. And you have to say to the kingdom of darkness, you have to speak into the world of Satan. And you have to say to that Antichrist spirit and all his, his other spirits that work with him, you have to break the power. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. You have to break the power of the Antichrist spirit and his demons, and you have to break the power of the system of Antichrist Christianity. You have to break that off your life. And then you can say, now Lord, open my eyes that I can see. Open my ears that I can hear. You know, talking about success today and destiny, I'm going to use those two terms interchangeably. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ in 2,000 years of existence has never been successful. Way back in the 90s, the Lord said to me, there has never ever been a generation of the church which had fulfilled God's call upon their lives. But in this final generation, and in the days that are ahead of us now, the Lord is going to raise up, hallelujah, a glorious church. Now again, has the church ever been successful? No. But Paul says by the Spirit of God, Ephesians 5.27, that he will raise up, hallelujah, a glorious church. What does that mean? Glorious church. That means just like God, filled with his life, filled with his nature, filled with his anointing, filled with his power, filled with his spirit. Just like the Lord, a glorious church having absolutely nothing wrong about her. No spot or wrinkle, no sin, no deception, no lies, nothing. It is a complete opposite. It is a complete paradox to what is happening in the church and what is taking place in the church. Now, let me say this to you. Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said to the disciples, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Now, here is the, the shocking reality. If you look back on the last almost 2,000 years of the church since AD 32, Matthew 16, 18 is not true. Not yet. There has never been a generation of the church that has prevailed against darkness and the kingdom of darkness. But Matthew 16, 18 was really spoken by the Lord Jesus for this final generation of the church. We are are going to fulfill Matthew 16, 18. We are going to rise up in the power and the glory and the fire of God. Holy Spirit is going to fall upon us. We're going to be filled with fire and glory. And we're going to take the gospel, supplies everything the world needs. And we are going to, with the power of the Spirit, save the world and bring in God's end time harvest. So Matthew 16, 18 will be fulfilled. The day will come, and it's not far from us now, where the church, the remnant, the remnant, the remnant will rise and begin to run with God. Hallelujah. And this remnant will become the army that the Lord will use once the fire is poured out, then, of course, others will be added later. This is why we want to be God's remnant. This is why the Lord had me write this whole big book about God's goal and glory revolution. To give this and put this in the hands of every person who truly have a passion for the Lord and who desire to be a part of what He is doing in these last days. Now we know what it is. It is the climax of the ages. It is the greatest work that God has ever done, what He's about to do in the earth right now. So number one, by changing and dropping AC and replace that with TC, apostolically, we prepare ourselves to become God's remnant. Number two, by prophetically looking into God's end time plan <clears throat> of this end time outpouring, revival, and harvest. By looking into that <clears throat> and begin to get that into our hearts. It's all in this book. It's all in the book. By looking into those things and, and ask Holy Spirit to put those things in our heart. We become prepared of the Lord, equipped by the Spirit, and prepared to become the remnant that walks with God. Hallelujah. And so that is what, we, what we're proclaiming. Now, this war of transformation, even now with the new book that's coming out very soon now, True Christianity, it is going to help you tremendously. Now, people, whenever you read my book, God's Golden Glory Revolution, whenever you read True Christianity or any book that I may write, by the, by the Spirit of the Lord. You've got to, before you even open the book, you've got to say, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you opened my eyes, both in my head and in my spirit. I thank you that you opened my ears. 
both on my head and in my spirit, that I may hear and see and know truth and revelation. You see, you have to have the truth in your mind to get understanding. You have to receive the truth in your spirit to receive revelation. The two go hand in hand. Remember Ephesians 1, 17 and 18? Ephesians 1, 17 talks about receiving the revelation knowledge of God in your spirit. Then verse 18 is being enlightened to have understanding in your mind. We need both. We have to have both. So what are we doing here? We are in a ministry that is beginning to prepare the church. We are preparing the church for the great outpouring and the fire and glory that is coming. But in doing so, we have to write this book, God's Golden Glory Revolution. As you can get on our website, anybody. I have seen, I'm, I'm going to just tell you this. I have seen a few years into the future. And I heard this in the spirit. That the time will come when this book is out of print. And there will be so many people that will want it. I heard somebody say, it's going to take about a year before we can get a copy. I heard that in the spirit. Because this book... God's Golden Glory Revolution is the blueprint. It is the plan. It is the architectural plan of God's great grand finale at the end of the church age, which Paul calls the climax of the ages. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I tell you, I have to, I have to be specific with you because I've got to help you. You know, most Christians never hear you. Because they're just blinded. They, they just, they're just bound by so many demons. I, I have to speak plainly. I remember in the Bible where it says in the Gospel of John, where it finally says, now Jesus spoke plainly to the disciples. No longer through, through uh, uh, um, other examples, but he spoke plainly. To, I have to speak plainly to you. We either believe God or not. Jesus said, when the fig tree blossoms, within it is the nation of Israel. Israel blossomed as a nation and gained sovereignty again in 1948, Friday, May 14, 1948. One generation. We are in the 74th year of the final generation. We are standing on the threshold of the greatest outpouring of God in the earth ever. We're on the verge of the greatest revival of God's fire and glory that will shake the nations of the world and produce billions of souls for the return of Jesus through our involvement. That's who we are. That's where we are. That's what's going on. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. But it's so amazing. It's so amazing that just like in 1988, it seems like not nobody, but it seems like almost nobody is listening to the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to say this to you plain and clear. The Lord commanded me <clears throat> to write this book. And my wife, the Lord commanded us to lead whoever is hungry and thirsty and want to be a part of the great fire and glory revolution that's coming. Yes, work towards that and prepare people. Now, I'm saying this humbly. I'm not saying this in arrogance or anything. We are the only ministry that I know of on the face of the earth that is right now preparing the church for the fire and glory revolution that's coming. I don't know of any other ministry that is doing it. Now, of course, with us, it's a special calling. But if pastors would listen to Holy Spirit, they would start teaching these things because that is where the focus of God is right now. Besides winning souls, of course. The focus of God is to raise up the church, to awake the church, and to begin to do the work of transformation in the church, a transformation from AC to TC, and preparation for the great end time finale of God that is coming to us right now around the corner. That's what we're doing. We are the only ministry that we know of around the world. It so amazes me how people can watch this program and then go away and never come back. But you see, history is again repeating itself. It always has. Back in the 20th century, the church experienced five global outpourings of revival. 1907, 1927, 1947, 1967, 1987. And if you go back and study those revivals, you will notice that every new revival had all new people in it. Even though there was only 20 years on from the previous revival. 
it would have all new people. The church is doing this again. The church is not talking to Holy Spirit. The church is not asking the Lord. Pastors, ministers, I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do, but they're not in contact and fellowship with Holy Spirit. It's easy to get on the platform, have musicians come and sing and jump around and look like you're spiritual. But those who are spiritual will be walking in the spiritual truth of God for today. Ministers or lay members, those who are spiritual have heard from Holy Spirit about the days that are ahead and the revolution that's coming. Those who are preparing right now to get themselves ready and ask God to prepare their spirit. Those are the people who will become the remnant, this remnant army of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, number one, through the war of transformation, we're bringing a change from AC to TC. That is the apostolic truth. Now, we should be excited about this. Thousands and thousands of Christians should be excited about this. I mean, I have almost 2,000 so-called friends on Facebook. They don't even watch me. They don't know why they're my friends. We, we, we use the ministry to bring this to people. But we have the same problem again. The same thing that happened with every 20-year revival in the 20th century. Once the time came for the new revival, the people from the previous revival had cooled off spiritually. And they were not interested. They were not interested in the next move of God, the next outpouring of God. It's the same darn thing over and over again. The people of the revival of the 90s and 2000s, laying on the floor in my meetings, laughing their heads off, drunk in the spirit for days, they are not at large. They are not interested in anything new or anything else. The same with the ministers. They're not hearing from God. If they hear from God, I'm telling you the truth, I have to say this to you. If a minister or a pastor is hearing from God, he would know the urgency of the fact that we are in the 74th year of the final generation, they would wake the heck up and say, Oh my God, people, we've got to prepare very quickly because the greatest outpouring of God globally is just around the corner. We've got to get ready. God is going to send fire. God is going to send glory. God is going to transform the, the church and save the world. This is the great grand finale plan of God. It's about to come to pass. We've got to wake up. We've got to change. change. But they don't. Because the church has perfected the art of living life outside of and without God's Holy Spirit. Trying to chase Jesus around the church pews every Sunday. The church has become an expert of doing Christianity without the presence of God. The church has become an expert in preaching Jesus without the presence of God. The church has developed a system which is of the Antichrist of the devil. That is so powerful and so deceptive that they all think they're doing what God wants them to do. Let me give you this example again. I mentioned this a few weeks ago. You know, I, I like sometimes to watch this uh, Smithsonian cha channel on TV because you learn so much from it. And a while ago I was watching different programs on Adolf Hitler. And you know what? He became convinced that God had called him to cleanse the world from the impurity of the Jewish people. He became convinced that he was supposed to conquer the whole world and set up a new order around the world. How, de how deceived can you be? Now one time in his office when they put the briefcase there and it exploded, you know, and, and he was not killed, he said that same day he met Mussolini. Mussolini came in on the train and they rejoiced together, rejoiced so to speak, because God's hand of protection was on Hitler's life. That's why he was not assassinated. And it was, it was virtually miraculous that he walked out of there. Of course, the devil kept him alive. He was convinced, and I don't know if he was convinced to the moment that he died, but he was convinced most of his life that he was really a political servant of God, cleansing the world from these evil Jews and all these evil things, and bringing about a new order of government that will uh, govern the whole world. How can you be that deceived? That you murder 6 million Jews and over 80 million people that were killed directly through that horrible World War II phenomenon or disaster. How deceived can you be? He believed that he was a servant of God. 
that he was doing what God wanted to do. Is it amazing? How can you ever justify that, that you can kill people and murder people in mass, of mass murders, and it's God? Because of the power of deception. The spirit of deception working right along with the spirit of the Antichrist has totally blinded and deceived the church to believe that Jesus is on the earth, is in our hearts, is in our churches, and that the system of Christianity that they have is the true one. That is the deception. So we are right now in step with the Spirit of God. We are absolutely in step with the plan of God for today. Now, let me talk about success uh, for a moment here, or destiny. Even if we look at this ministry. Is this ministry today successful? This ministry is successful, not in reaching many people at this time. This ministry is successful for one reason only. This is the reason why all our needs are met, my wife and I. This is the reason why we have peace and sleep peacefully every night. This is the reason why our bodies are well. You know, I'm not old, I'm 64. But I tell you what, glory to God, I got the health that I had when I was 30, 35 years old. Why do these things happen? You must be strong in faith. No, 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 no. What we do in this ministry is we hear from the Lord and we bring to the church exactly what He says. I've done this for 38 years. I've been thrown out of churches. I've been cussed. I've been cursed by pastors getting rid of me because I came into their churches and I tackled their system of antichrist Christianity. And I said to the people, this is garbage. You're supposed to walk with Holy Spirit, not in this system that you have. So, are we successful? We're up to date. We're exactly where God wants this ministry to do and what we're doing in bringing this war of transformation to you. And then once that is accomplished, then we'll prepare you for the prophetic, the end time revival. We are absolutely in step with what the Lord has for us. That is success. You see, in, in the church world, success is money. The church is just like the world. Not much difference. In numbers. Right. Numbers and money. Now, let me say this to you. We, we look at churches, especially here in the United States, that are large churches, and many people, great buildings, lots of money. And people say, they are successful. Now, let me tell you something about that. I, you see, I've got to speak these things openly. There's no more time to, to cover up things. We've got to just do it. I think oftentimes about those pastors who have those large churches, and I'm thinking about how many demons do they have to sleep with every night? How, how much compromise? How many lies? How many things do they have to do to get the people? You see, it's easy to fill your church with people. It's easy. Very easy to do that. But success in the church is supposed to be a big church with lots of money. It's not. Money is never success. Money is a byproduct of success. Prosperity is never success. Prosperity is a byproduct of success. The success comes first, then the flow begins to come. Hello? So now, having said this, what are we doing? We are bringing to you, and I'm saying this again, every person, every one of you who have read this book, God's Golden Glory Revolution, every one of you that have read this book, if you read it with Holy Spirit, He'll open it up to you. There's so much in here. There's years and years and years of things in there, what the Lord said to me. But if you do, Holy Spirit will open up your eyes in your understanding, and He'll open up your spirit in revelation, and you will begin to know what the hour is, what the plan is, what is coming next, and to prepare for the great grand finale of the final outpouring of God, but do so first of all apostolically by getting rid of the system of church, the Antichrist system of church and that spirit, and then be transformed into the truth of true Christianity and walking with Holy Spirit. Now, where is success? Where is success for you today? How do we become successful? Success for every Christian is to find God's plan and purpose for your life progressively and walk that out and live that out to the glory of God. Success only comes to the church when the church is guided 
by the Spirit of God, corporately and individually, in the plan that God has for our lives. Now, so where do you find that success? Where do you find your destiny? Well, first of all, it's not in the world system. It is in the world, but it's not of the world system. See, we live in this world, and we do things in this world, and your life is lived in this world, but not through the system of the world. The world system does not have the revelation for you and for me regarding the plan of destiny that God has for your life. It is not in the world. Your purpose and destiny and the success coming with it is not, or will not, excuse me, will not come to you through the five senses of your body. If it could, Paul would not have said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that I do not see, ear do not hear, neither does it come up in your heart. But verse 10, 1 Corinthians 2, 10, these things come to us by Holy Spirit revealing the things of God in us. So it don't come through the senses. Hello? It's nowhere out there. Your destiny and success for the future is not in a church. Your destiny, God's destiny plan for your life and the success He has for you is not inside your pastor. It's not inside any minister. It's not inside me. Hello? It's not. Now I'm going to shock you. God's destiny plan for you is not in your Bible either. Hello? Well, I'm just going to read the Bible and find out what I'm supposed to do. Now, I opened the Bible. I found my name in there, Gabriel. But I didn't find the personal instructions given to me as to what to do with my life on a daily basis. It's not in there. Yours is not in there either. Now, the Word of God in the New Testament will agree with the plan of God when you get it. But there's no personal instruction given in the Word of God. There's no personal layout of God's plan with your life. It does not come through the Word. It will be confirmed by the Word. It will be in line with the New Testament Word of God. But you cannot get that out of the Bible. Why? Because you may be lucky like me that your name is in there, but still there will be no personal instructions of guidance to you as to what you are supposed to do. Here's the number one reason why the church has been a failure for 1930 years. Because the church is not hooked up with Holy Spirit, cannot hear from Holy Spirit, and therefore don't know what to do. It's not in the Bible. It's not received through a word. It's not even received through faith. Your destiny is not received through prayer. If prayer would do it, my God. Many Christians would have their destiny. And it so amazes me that through the Antichrist system of church, Christians have been brainwashed to try and find their destiny anywhere in the Bible. And if they don't find it, which they won't, which you won't, because it's not in there, then we run to a prophet and ask the prophet to reveal to us from the Spirit of God what the destiny plan is, what is the next step, what is the calling, what is going to make us successful, what is going to cause us to live out the destiny plan of God for our lives. Then we run to a pastor here, we run to a prophet there everywhere, but it's not in them. The church is not capable, corporately or individually, to find the will of God the purpose for your life, the calling, the destiny of your life, and the success attached to it. You cannot find it anywhere through anyone, through anyone's prayers or intercessions or prophecies or preaching, nothing. It's not there. It's only one place to be found, and that is inside the person of God's Holy Spirit. Jesus said to the disciples in the forbidden chapters of the Bible, John 14, 15, 16, 17, When I return to the Father, I will send Him to you. Holy Spirit, and He will do 14 things. All of this is in my new book also, True Christianity. There are 14 things that Holy Spirit will personally do for you in your spirit and in your life if you enter into a personal relationship with Him after you are born again. Hallelujah. That's the only place where you can find your destiny. That's the only way that you can learn 
about God's plan for your life, especially in these last days, is through and by the person of Holy Spirit. John 16, 13, Jesus said, Jesus, that's this not even Paul, Peter, James, or John. Jesus said, but when he has come, he will lead you and guide you. John 16, 13. I love this verse. I preached it all my life, 38 years. Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. The most important word there in that phrase is the word all. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. What does that mean? That again reaffirms the fact that he is the only source. Glory to God. People are going crazy in here as well. Hallelujah. He is the only person. He will not lead you and guide you into some things or some truth. He will lead you and guide you into all, A-L, all truth. You don't get it through intercession. You don't get it through fasting and praying. You don't get it by just reading the Bible all day long. You don't get it by just confessing. You don't get it by going to church. You can only find your destiny. And in this last day, as we're living in the final years before Jesus comes back, the destiny and purpose that God has for the church is so big. It's so great. It's so awesome. It's so amazing. But you can find it only one place, and that is the person of Holy Spirit. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. All truth. Not some truth. All truth. So that means that he is your only source or resource, if you would, of revival, of revelation, and of your destiny. He is the only one. And here's the main reason why the church has never been successful. Because you cannot receive anything from Holy Spirit if you are not in a personal relationship with him as he lives in your spirit. And this, the Antichrist spirit in the system has done so successfully for 1930 years to keep the church away from Holy Spirit and the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. He's the only one. Holy Spirit is the only one. Holy Spirit is the only person. Again, it's not in your Bible. The New Testament will agree with it, will be in line with what God says to you. It will affirm that in the New Testament life, yes. But there's no personal instructions in the Bible. Why do Christians always live as if there's personal instruction in the Bible for their life and destiny? Oh, well, praise God, it's in here, I'm going to find it. It's not in there. In the New Testament, the Lord gives us all the truth, all the revelation, all the principles of the Christian life and how to live that in a spiritual fashion. But the facts and the truths of the future, your life, your destiny, the purpose, all those things, it's not in there. It's not in there. It's not in there. It's inside Holy Spirit. Jesus entrusted Holy Spirit with the whole church to come and govern and rule the church. And Jesus entrusted Holy Spirit to come and deliver to every one of us all of what God has for us. All the revelation, all the truth, all the guidance, all the blessings, everything. It is only within Holy Spirit. You can only find your destiny and success when you hear that from Holy Spirit. That's why no wonder... At the end of every church being addressed in Revelations 2 and 3, at the end, these words, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Why? Why? Because it's Holy Spirit speaking to the church, not Jesus. Because Holy Spirit is in the earth. Holy Spirit is in your spirit. Holy Spirit is in the church. He's usually cast out on Sunday mornings, every Sunday morning. But He's in your life, and He is the only person in the universe that can give you the guidance. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father on His own throne. And Father God is sitting on the throne of heaven. He's not coming down. Jesus is not coming down here. He may come down from time to time and visit individuals. But that's a, that's a separate uh, reason or a separate thing. But all the guidance, the truth, the life, the blessing, the power, the fire, the anointing, the strength, the revelation, the truth, the guidance, the comfort, the help. Everything you need in this life comes to you or can come to you only through the person of God, the Holy Spirit. The absolute only way. There's no other way. There's no other way. But in this day and this hour, God is beginning to stir up. Holy Spirit is beginning to stir up the spirits and the hearts of so many Christians around the world. He's beginning to impart a hunger and a passion in the hearts of God's people. And some of them are soon going to wake up spiritually and say, Oh my God, we're standing on the threshold of the greatest visitation of God in this planet ever. And I was called 
by God from before the foundation of the world to be born and to live in this time so that I can be a part of this glorious church of the last days. That I can be a part of what God is doing. I can be a part of His end time prophetic plan. I can be His apostolic church. Hallelujah. And I can be part of the prophetic plan to go and bring in the harvest by the power and the glory of God. This is why we're doing this. This is why we're spending time with this. And you see in the church, we always want everything in five seconds. Prophesy to me quickly. Say a prayer over me. Just say this and, and run home. That's it. No, 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 no. Your life and my life will not change. We will not be able to just quickly run from AC to TC in a few weeks. This stuff, the whole church system of Antichrist Christianity has been poured into you and pounded down in your heart or your soul really ever since you first stepped foot inside a church. You said ever since you first was born again, this whole system has been given to you. Now the Lord has exposed this thing and is being exposing it so that we can see it and get rid of it. But don't think that just because you begin to see the truth that tomorrow you'll be fine and all the AC is gone. That stuff is pounded down into your soul and that religious stuff is pounded down into you, into you, in your soul for years and years and years and years and years. But the, the, the work of transformation, the path of transformation that we're on is a long one. I'm glad it's so long because if it was short, every Christian would want it. Christians always look for a quick way out just a quick thing, don't have to do much, the least involvement ever. Well, this one requires all your involvement. Actual fact, you have to have a passion from God to change from AC to TC. You have to have a burning fire in your spirit. If not, you'll be like all those people who began to watch us when we started this, and now there's only a handful left. Well, why did they stop watching you? Because they don't have what it takes. The church at large today does not possess, does not have what it takes to walk with God. The church today has not got it within them to fulfill their destiny because they don't have the hunger and the passion for the person of God's Spirit and they don't have the hunger and the passion and the desire to be part of God's end time plan. You cannot run with people if you don't have the strength. You cannot run this race if you're not strengthened. You cannot participate in this race if you don't have what it takes. And what it takes is to have that passion. That's why I tell people all the time, and you know, eventually people just turn off to you because you say it so much. Every day, you and I should be asking Holy Spirit to pour more anointing, more desire, more passion, more hunger into our spirits. To pour more of an excitement and an expectancy and joy into our minds. And so that Holy Spirit can prepare us for what is coming, but more so that even right now that we can walk this path of transformation. Now, I know I'm so excited about this. As soon as this new book is out, True Christianity, you can read it in one evening, probably two hours, you can read it. And there, it's like in your face. It's like it's plain. Here's Antichrist Christianity. Here's True Christianity. Here's how the old system works. Here's how the New Testament really is. I mean, we just... Lay it out, Holy Spirit, through me. Another thing, I don't write books because, you know, because I want to write books. The first time I wrote a book was in 1996, the old one, the old golden glory of the end time church. And the Lord had to convince me to do it and, and, and said, this is what I want. And the same with this one. You know, in 2017, the beginning part of the year, the Lord uh, began to say to my wife, you know, tell him, tell him he needs to write a new golden glory book. And finally, in July, of 2017, Holy Spirit came to me and said, we have to redo the Golden Glory book and update it. We're going to put everything in it. I want you to do this. And the Lord really visited me in a special way. And I sat down with him on Friday, July 14, 2017. That was the beginning. The Lord said to me, that was the beginning of this new season of transformation. And for three years, I sat before him almost every day. What do you want to have in here? What, what do I need to do here? What do you want me to add? I wrote this book. By the instruction and the guidance of the Lord. I hold up hundreds hundred of times. I need people see that. Hallelujah. I, I <laughs> if they haven't seen it by now, they would. And, and the Lord said to me, you have to follow me and obey me and put everything in this book. Now, back in the days of revival and preaching, many pastors would get mad at me. But most of them didn't throw me out of the churches because I brought the move of God. I brought the joy revival. And they would tolerate me because of what was happening to their people. But they hated the truth that I was preaching. Why? Because they're part of the system. 
I need to be plain and simple to you. We're not putting people down. We're not putting pastors down. We pray for them. We pray that everybody will have their eyes open. Every minister, every pastor, every Christian have their eyes open to see the Antichrist system and, and, this, and, and the Antichrist spirit and to begin to see true Christianity and what that is. And how does that begin? Again, it all starts with Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. In him we live and move and have our being. Everything should be in and off and by Holy Spirit. If it's not, we're in religion, we're in man-made stuff, we're away from God. <clears throat> Hello. And it all starts with Holy Spirit. And that starts with when you get your breakthrough with Holy Spirit. Now, you cannot just week after week listen. I'm, I'm not talking about everybody. Many people who watch us have had a breakthrough with Holy Spirit. They're walking with Holy Spirit. But I'm speaking generally now. You cannot just watch us and sit back and say, well, you know, I sure hope this happens to me. Nothing is going to happen to you until you decide that you are going to seek Holy Spirit and His presence and that you're going to ask Him to come and visit you and give you the breakthrough of personally meeting Him. Hello. That's where it starts. Now, back to chapter 10 of God's golden glory revolution. I probably... Added to that chapter four or five times after the Lord had given it to me. He said, no, you've got to add more. Add more here. Add more there. Add more there. One time my wife and I were sitting together and the Lord was talking to both of us. And, 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 and the Lord even used my wife right there to add to the book in that chapter. And finally, when it was done, after four or five times going back and add more and add more, the Lord finally said, you got it now. Chapter 10 of God's Golden Glory Revolution, the first 22 pages, is all about Holy Spirit, who He is, God's creativity in you, gifts in your spirit, Holy Ghost hammered ideas in your spirit, walking with the Lord, spiritual fellowship, spiritual truth, growing spiritually, discovering Holy Spirit, and walk with Him. 22 pages, the first 22 pages of chapter 10. That's where you start. That's where you really start this journey. The first thing is not the knowledge of true Christianity. The first thing ought to be breakthrough with Holy Spirit. The first thing you need is to have your personal breakthrough with Holy Spirit. Now, again, how are you going to have that? Two things. Number one, you've got to ask Holy Spirit to give you the hunger, the passion, the drive, the spiritual hunger to seek His fellowship, to seek his presence and breakthrough with him. So he's got to give you the hunger and the thirst which you've got to ask him for every day. And then Holy Spirit will come and will reveal himself to you. He does not respond to you because you're in the works program. You, you pay, pray five hours a day. You walk the night. You walk, uh, in the night, night time you walk the floor and confess and everything. He does not respond to the works of the flesh. Hello. Anything spiritual that you do with the flesh... And that you do with initiating with the flesh. It's of the flesh. It's not of the Spirit. Holy Spirit does not respond to the things of the flesh. Holy Spirit does not respond to what we do with our flesh. He responds to hunger. Holy Spirit responds to hunger. Let me say it again. Holy Spirit responds to hunger. When you find somebody with hunger, He's going to fill that hunger. That's the first thing you need. First thing everybody needs is to lock yourself away. Well, first of all, you receive and get from the Lord the hunger, the passion. Ask Him, and you know it's a process. Everything is not overnight. It's not overnight. It's not instantaneous. It's not a quick word of prophecy. That's hogwash. It's garbage. It is a walk. There's a life. There's a progression. There's a path. There's a journey. But you cannot embark on this journey of walking with God into your destiny. If you don't have Holy Spirit walking with you. And in order to have Him walk with you, you have got to get to the place where you say to yourself, Okay, I have got to discover Holy Spirit. It's not a lie. It's the truth. See, in the past, when I came in 88, I would teach uh, uh, on John 14, 15, 16, 17. And then people would take what I teach and add it to the religious garbage and the hogwash that they're living in. And they'd say to me, it doesn't work. I, I didn't have a break, so I didn't hear Holy Spirit. Well, you know, you can't go down in hell and ask Holy Spirit to come and join you. We've got to get free from this system. We've got to get free from Antichrist Christianity. You've got to connect with Holy Spirit and will through hunger and thirst. I'm telling you this, Jesus is not a liar. The church is a liar. Many Christians are liars. 
Jesus said, when I go to the Father, I will send him to you. He will come and live in you forever. He will lead you and guide you in all things. For he will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that he will speak. That is not a lie. Everywhere on the face of the earth, Christians are acting like that's a lie. Now, Jesus was lying. He said, I'm going to the Father. Oh, no, well, we believe he's still here. Well, he's not. Well, you know, the Holy Spirit will say, you know, tell these things and speak to me. He never speaks to me. I'll tell you why. Because you don't have, if he never speaks to you, that is, that you don't have the hunger and the passion to cause him to want to speak to you in a personal manner. Once you receive from the Lord that hunger and that fire and that passion, Holy Spirit will begin to talk to you, but then it's time to strip yourself of all this Antichrist system of Antichrist Christianity and get free from it. Hallelujah. But you see, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. The book God gave us, God's Golden Glory Evolution. And this book is, first of all, for the remnant. See, the church does not read a book that's got 400 pages. The church is lazy, slack, disinterested, not on fire, Seem to have no power, no anointing, no desire, no hunger. The church at large, I'm speaking the truth here. Yes, the church is born again. But the church at large in this world is totally without passion for God. Totally without fellowship and Holy Spirit. And in no way they're going to read a book of 400 pages. Because they don't have the passion to pursue something that is worth something. Hallelujah. But God has called us. God has called you. He has called me. We are all called in this hour to discover the person of God's Spirit. And you see, Holy Spirit is going to walk us through this whole thing. He wants to walk us through this whole process. But it's not something happening in a week or two or three. And, and so many Christians have done in this in the last year, again, what the church has always done, and have walked away from this. What I'm bringing to you is the most important message on the face of the earth right now. The plan of God's gold and glory revolution, the end time outpouring, the final revival and harvest, and the harvest of billions of souls. That is where the heartbeat of God is right now. If you don't know that and see that as a minister, if you don't preach this, you're out of, of the will of God, you're out of the plan of God. The reason for it is that if you don't preach this thing as a minister, because you don't hear from God. And that's common. That's very common. So we continue to offer you by the Spirit of God, all the truth. So we're going to continue to walk through this war of transformation. The ones who desire it. Once again, most of the church are gone. They, they're no good. They're born again. They go to heaven. But they're no good. They have no profit to the body of Christ. They don't even walk with Holy Spirit. Don't even have any fire, any anointing. Most of the church is so backslidden that it's, it's, it's almost it's unbelievable. But there is a call of the cry of the Spirit of God today. He who has an ear... Let him hear what God's Spirit is saying. The Lord is saying, I'm calling you, my people. I'm calling you to come and walk with me. I'm calling you to walk in fellowship with me. I'm calling you to come and walk and live with me, Holy Spirit. And I will show you the great destiny that God has for you in these last days, which the Lord prepared for you before the foundation of the world. And so this is why we're doing what we are doing. And eventually this will catch on. It was the same in 1988. It took several years for people even to begin to acknowledge that the joy of God being poured out was of God. I mean, pastors would ask me, what is this? Why do the people lay the floor and laugh? What are they laughing about? What's this about? I said, that's Holy Spirit joy. And I would say to them, do, do you, if you go back and study at the turn of the century in 1900, when the Pentecostal move began in 1906, 1907, people would be hit by the Spirit of God, be drunk, lay on the floor, and laugh in the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's all their part of history. But they don't know this. They didn't know this. And they would say to me, what is this? What is this about? This is Holy Spirit. Holy what? Holy macro. No, no, no. Holy Spirit. Holy what? Holy cow. No. Holy Spirit. Here is the person of God, pastor, that you do not know and never have had the passion to pursue him and seek after him. That's why you don't know anything about the things of the Spirit. That's why you don't recognize this outpouring of the Spirit. That's why you did not hear from God beforehand to prepare yourself for this revival. How many Christians and pastors and ministers uh, failed to become part of the joy revival? 
because they did not walk in fellowship with Holy Spirit and therefore did not give God's Spirit the opportunity to prepare them for what is coming. That is what we're doing here. That is what we're doing with this ministry. We're calling by the cry of God to any person, any Christian, and it goes beyond me that we don't have thousands and thousands of people watching us. On the other hand, that's to be expected. The church always plans to miss God. The church always lived the life that is away from the Spirit of God and that will cause them to fail or to miss the plan and the purpose of God. But we're not going to. The new book will be out soon. I'm going to write three more before the end of this year. The Lord said to me, it's important. Write this. Bring these books to the church. And so the Lord is beginning to fill a spiritual library for us. Hallelujah. To get us ready. But the people who will grab the Golden Glory book, the people who will grab all the books that we're writing, through Christianity and all the, all the new ones coming, will be the new converts that will get saved between now and the time the fire of God gets here. It's once again going to take a new breed of Christians to grab this and run with this. Why? Because the present church is doing what every generation of the church has done since 1907. When the new move of God comes, we're not interested. Oh, we've been there. We've been the move of God. They have cooled off. They have backslidden. They become lukewarm. And this is why this is so important what we do. God has a destiny for you. God has a purpose for you. God has a destiny for you that is so great and so awesome in these last days. And once again, here's another problem. The church does not possess a verification system. In other words, when you preach the truth, they can go somewhere and confirm it. You can confirm it in the context of the New Testament. See, everything that God is doing will be confirmed and is confirmed in the true context of the New Testament. There's not always the individual scripture, but it's confirmed in the whole context of the New Testament. It's there. And so, and so Christians don't have what I call a spiritual verification system. So you preach something... And, and they don't know, there's not a chapter or a verse or a book or something they can go to confirm that this is true. That was what was happening in 1988 when I came here. I would tell them, say, get ready. You see these people laying on the floor here? This is the beginning of a new move of God that's coming to America and the world. But they could not have that verified. They could not have that confirmed. Because the only way that you can verify what God is saying, the only thing that you can verify the plans and purposes of God for the future is through the person of Holy Spirit. So if there's no verification uh, available to you, you just, you, you just got to walk away from it. And it's only by walking in fellowship and relationship with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will bear witness to the truth. He'll take the things of Jesus and give it to you. He is the Spirit of truth. He will speak the words of truth. He will confirm, hallelujah, what He is saying because He's the one speaking to the church. And He will confirm to you if you take time to spend with Holy Spirit and walk with Him and fellowship with Him, He will begin to confirm to you the things that we teach. He will confirm to you, yes, these are the last days. Yes, the great revolution is just around the corner. Yes, let me prepare your heart and let me raise you up as a remnant, part of the remnant army that he's sending forth in these days into the world. No. So, And I did expect that as we go on with this war of transformation, that most people would drop off. Because I know the church. I've been in the church all my life, 64 years. I know the church. The church has no hunger. The church is impatient. The church just wants a quick fix. A quick word of prophecy, lay hands on me, give me a miracle, and I'm going to go back to work and live my life without God. Just live in the world, live in the things of the world, and come back on Sunday, lay hands on me, give me the miracles that I need, and I'll go back and live my life again. Because the church has very little passion for God. Why? Because you cannot have the passion and the hunger if you're not walking with the Holy Spirit. It comes from Him. It comes through Him. It comes only by Him. It comes only by Him. The things of God only come to you by and through the person of Holy Spirit. So we are continuing. And this should be, this should be the greatest excitement in your life. This, this is the greatest journey that you've ever been on if you're on this journey with us. In the transformation process or journey from Antichrist Christianity to true Christianity. This is the greatest adventure that you can imagine. In all this journey, you can discover Holy Spirit for yourself or in new and deeper ways. 
Hallelujah. He can verify to you the truth of the hour, the time, the plan, the purpose, the fire, the glory, everything that's coming. And he can continue to pour the hunger and the passion in you. Hallelujah. And he'll continue to help you to strip the whole system of Antichrist Christianity out of you. To break the power of Antichrist spirit over your life. To be set free. That your eyes be opened. Your eyes being enlightened. Your, your ears being opened. That you may receive the apostolic truth of the New Testament. Here's the amazing thing. Just by walking away from Antichrist Christianity and being transformed into New Testament Christianity, you're going to find a lifestyle of truth that will work. The church is in so many gimmicks and works programs today to try and conjure up something that does not work. But it's only through Holy Spirit. The reason why Antichrist Christianity will no longer work, God has tolerated it until 2017, will it? 2020. Then he said to me, once this book was published, The Golden Glory Revolution, he said to me, now I will no longer accept this system in the church. Now the church has to rise and break free from the spirit and from and the system, the Antichrist spirit, Antichrist system. Now is the time to be set free. People say, give me a prophetic word. Here's the prophetic word for the whole church right now. In Jesus' name, rise up. Let God open your eyes and see for the first time the Antichrist spirit and his false form of Christianity through the Antichrist church system. And let God help you to rip this demonic thing out of you and be set free from it. And that you may embrace Holy Spirit, receive passion and fire for him, and that you may be transformed by Holy Spirit through a personal meeting of revelation and then a life and a walk that you will enjoy with him hallelujah that is the message on the heart of god right now like i'm saying uh, so many people that even started out with us they're not there anymore why because they don't have what it takes do you have what it takes are you looking for some quick fix thing stop watching me are you looking for something this to happen overnight stop watching me we are on a journey we have to undo and destroy and remove from us this antichrist system of Antichrist Christianity. All of what's been pounded into us for years and years and years and years and is so deep in our soul and our mind and our emotions has to be plugged up one piece at a time. This is a process. That's why the process is the war of transformation. Removing more AC. Receiving more TC in that, that full that place. See, you do the part in your head. You ask the Lord to do the part in your spirit. That's where He operates. Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1.17, enlighten me with the revelation knowledge, Holy Spirit, of your will and plan in my spirit. Ephesians 1.17. Ephesians 1.18 is the part you do in your mind, in your soul, to remove all of the stuff. It's, 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 it requires the removing of an entire system of false Christianity. And this is a process. Here's the best news, though. By the time the fire of God is poured out, if we're still in that process, the fire of God will immediately accelerate the process and complete it. But you've got to be found in the process when the fire comes. When the fire of God is poured out, you have to be in the process of walking with Holy Spirit and of removing progressively Antichrist Christianity from you. You've got to be in the process. You've got to be in that remnant army that is walking through the process of being changed by God and changed by God's Spirit. Because then when the fire of God hits you, hallelujah, God will complete the work in you almost immediately. The glory of God will hit you and your destiny will be handed to you regarding the nations of the world and what God has for you. But this requires passion. If you don't have passion, don't watch me. I, I, I don't care. If you really want this, you have got to say and take the time. You have got to go back and read John 14, 15, 16, 17. And you've got to again say to yourself, this is the truth. I want the truth from Holy Spirit. He will lead me and guide me. He will fill me. He will comfort me. He will reveal to me. He will lead me. He will fill me with the presence of God. And he'll take me into these great things of God. But this is not going to happen just because you hear me preach once a week here on Sunday. It's not going to happen because I just want to sweep up everybody emotionally this is not emotion this is a heart issue that comes through desire and hunger in your spirit now we're going to walk this process out 
As I said, soon the new book, True Christianity, will be in my hands and in your hands. And we're going to work through it. Once the book is out, I'm going to work through the book from beginning to end. There are shocking things in there that you've never seen before. There are revelatory things in there you've never thought of before. Absolutely amazing. And this new book is for all Christians. The time is getting short. This new book, True Christianity, is, is there. The main purpose of it is to, in a shocking fashion, wake up the church to the system of Antichrist Christianity. Break free from it and move with Holy Spirit into true Christianity. Because I tell you, the time is coming when it's too late. When you can't do it anymore. The time is coming. When it's too late. Yeah, the fire God will still hit you and transform you, but you'll not be in the remnant army. You'll not be on those first army that God would send out into the harvest field and into the nations of the world. If you're not enter now with us, so that Spirit of God may prepare you, get your heart ready, and that He may help you to remove Antichrist Christianity from you, and that He may help you in receiving uh, true Christianity in your mind, in your soul, which is, which is what you do, and He will put it in your spirit. This is the holy calling that we've been called unto. This is the amazing, amazing thing of what is ahead of us. Once again, I can give you the scriptures. I give you the scriptures all in the book here of God's end time plan. But even so, that cannot be confirmed to you until Holy Spirit confirms it to your heart. That's the only verification that you can have, that we are this close to the end time uh, revival, that we are so close to the coming of the Lord. Only Holy Spirit can confirm that in your spirit. And again, I want to say to you, if you're really serious about this, go to my book, God's Gold and Glory Revolution, chapter 10. Take those first 22 pages, like full of stuff. There's, there's so much in there. And slowly but surely begin to work through that with Holy Spirit. Say to the Spirit of God, Lord, I'm going to reach you. I want you to teach me. Open my eyes. I want you to minister to me. I want you to change me. I want to walk with you. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to enjoy spiritual romance with you. I want to be in your army. I want to be in God's remnant army. I want to be. And, you know, it's not going to help. And I'm not trying just to sweep you up emotionally here. This is so awesome. Emotion won't work anyway. Oh, it's so amazing. You know, people get excited. Sunday night in church, I mean, they're ready to take the world. They're running the aisles, doing cartwheels, so excited. Oh, glory to God. And by Wednesday, Thursday, they don't, even, they don't even remember what they were so excited about. It's not about emotion. It's about the Lord. It's about truth. It's about fire. It's about glory. It's about what the Lord wants to do in these last days. Hallelujah. And the Lord is going to walk us through this process. From uh, Antichrist Christianity to true Christianity and into friendship with Holy Spirit. And then prepare us for the, for the prophetic part of the plan. See, that's the apostolic. Then prepare us for the prophetic part of it. Now, in the next few months, let me say this to you. There's some amazing things that are going to happen. There's some amazing things that God is beginning to do in the lives of God's people. This is the time. If you ever want to say yes to the Lord, this is the time to say yes. Yes to what? To everything He's got for you. So many Christians, people, pastors, they all have their own agendas. And people sometimes listen to me when I preach and say, oh, well, he's just preaching. When I say that everything we do, my wife Shelly and I, everything we do, we do by the leading and the instruction of Holy Spirit. And if he doesn't say it, we don't do it. I told the Lord many years ago, he said to me, I'm, I'm calling you to the ministry on the call that Jesus put on your life. If you always follow me and obey me, do, say, teach, preach, prophesy everything I tell you. I will protect you. I'll protect your body. I'll protect your health. And you will fulfill your destiny. And ever since those early days of my ministry, even before I came to America, I made the decision. You know, here's the stuff people preach about, but nobody does it. I made the decision. I said, Lord, I don't care what. I'm going to. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to preach the truth. And God raised me up to preach against the system for 38 years of my ministry, all my ministry. I have been going upstream against the stream of the church. I have been going the opposite direction. I have come against the system. I've come against the lies. I didn't know to call it the Antichrist system. But my entire ministry, I have promoted Holy Spirit, relationship and fellowship with Holy Spirit, and, and take all this other garbage and get rid of it because it's not of God. And I tell you what, people hate you for it. Pastors hated me. Like I said, some of them threw me out of their churches. I can tell you horror story after horror story. But I said this to the Lord. I said, Lord, you will get from me in my infirmity, in my imperfection, in all, in and through all my shortcomings. 
one thing is going to stand as truth for every day of my life. I'm going to give people God's truth. I'm going to say, preach, teach, prophesy. Everything you tell me, not anything else, not water it down, not make excuse for it. I'm going to give, and you can know this. This is my pledge I made to God 38 years ago, that I will always bring you from the Spirit of God in this broadcast every Sunday. I'm not coming with a good message. I come with exactly what the Lord gives me. It's a divinely inspired message for the day. Every Sunday when I sit here, I have a lot of notes which I write just to help my meathead after the Lord speaks to me. But I bring to you, this is my vow, this is my pledge, I bring to you, I have been, do now, and will until Jesus comes. I will continue to give you the truth. In order to do so, I have to go against the system. I have to go against the whole Antichrist church system. I love the church. I don't hate the church. I'm not attacking the church. I'm identifying what's happening, and we have the answer. Blessed be God. We see the system. We see the truth. We see Antichrist Christianity, and we know now how to get the church out of it. And that is what we're doing right now. We're bringing about the war of transformation to walk you from Antichrist Christianity into true Christianity. That is the heartbeat of God right now. That is what we're doing. That's what we're bringing. But you have to receive from the Lord the passion to run this race with us, this race of transformation. You have to receive from Him the passion. It's not going to take a day, a week, or a month. It's going to take a while to get rid of all the religious stuff that's been pounded down in you forever. It's going to take some time for you to strip those things out of your mind, out of your soul, and for God to begin to move you over into true Christianity. But we are on this journey. We are on this journey. We are walking. We are running with God. We are on this journey from the Antichrist system of Christianity and that spirit and the whole religious system into Holy Spirit true Christianity and becoming the true apostolic church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once we've become the apostolic church, the fire of God will come. Then we'll become the prophetic church when the Lord dispatches us as an army to the nations to bring about His last day end time prophetic plan. Hallelujah. It's so, so awesome. God is so awesome. I'll tell you what. It's just so much. What a privilege. What a joy. What a joy it's been for me. Let me tell you this. I know me. My wife knows she, me too. She'll agree with you. You mean for the Lord to have called me to this and called us together. I, I always say, Lord, you, you picked the worst person. One time he actually said to me, yes, I did. And I was kind of taken back. And, and the Lord said to me, I always do that. I call the person that is least suitable for the job and give it to them because it's going to be done by the Spirit. It's going to be done by God. And all these years, every time I get up to minister or sit down, I bring you what the Lord gives me from His Spirit. Here is the number one principle of this message, of this ministry. The number one principle of truth in this ministry. We will always obey God. We will always teach and preach and bring exactly what He says and exactly how He says it. We will always deliver to the church everything God brings to us at the moment that He brings it to us without any compromise, without making any excuses, or without trying to water it down or change it into something else. We will continue Hallelujah. And we are so excited, as the new book is coming out soon, we are so excited that this book is going to find its way into the hands of many people. We're going to put it on Kindle and everywhere. Hallelujah. And this is going to be the cry, the hard cry of God to the church to wake up, rise up, wake up, have your eyes opened, and pull out of that system into true Christianity and begin to walk with the Holy Spirit. That is our apostolic calling. This has never been done. The early church never became an apostolic church. The, the early church never walked in the apostolic truth of the New Testament. But this is what we are called unto. This is what God has called us unto. And we have said yes. Despite our natural uh, bodies and our mind, everything, and our imperfections, we have said yes. And the people that run with us, hallelujah, will become this remnant army. And there are going to be few of them until the new generation is raised up. God is raising up, even in this hour, a new generation of the church. He has to do it quickly because the one that's there presently now is no good to nothing except for the few exceptions of people who have the hunger. Like I said, it's the same with every revival. Those who were in the last revival will not be in this next one. Why? Because they've chosen that they will no longer be hungry. And now the joy is gone and the outpouring of the joy is gone, and so that's it. That is history. That is truth. That is fact. But we're calling, and we're crying, 
by the Spirit and the heart of God. And we will continue to walk through this process of stripping AC from us and moving into true Christianity, moving into relationship with, with Holy Spirit. And the ones who really have the hunger are the ones who will lock themselves away and cry out to Holy Spirit until they meet Him and have their breakthrough. Those are the only ones that will be in this remnant army. But for the most of it, it's going to be new people that God will raise up. As in every move from 1907, God had to raise up a new breed, a new people to run with the new revival. It's going to be the same again. Glory to God. He's going to have His remnant people and His remnant army. And this is what we're doing. This war of transformation. Holy Spirit is walking us through this step by step by step by step. Not overnight, but step by step. Moment by moment. Hallelujah. The greatest thing is this. Hallelujah. This is what God is doing. Bringing us the truth of the New Testament and preparing us for the last day outpouring of fire Glory, hallelujah, and the coming of the Lord. Praise God. I pray you will hear the Spirit of God. I pray when you watch this, you will hear the Spirit of God. It's so, you know, it so amazes me. People receive all this, and so, so very few people seem to respond. Don't you know a Christian, somebody who desperately needs the truth that we're bringing? It's just amazing. It's like, it's like what we're preaching here is, is just kind of to be covered and hidden. And of course, the devil does that. The devil works against it. But the true hungry and hunger people of God will arise in this hour. And I don't have to sit here every Sunday to try and motivate you. The moment you hook up with Holy Spirit, He Himself will motivate you. Why are Christians excited on Sunday and leaping and jumping at church and doing cartwheels? And by Thursday they want to commit suicide. Because it was all just an emotional thing. There was no depth to it. There was no depth in their heart. There was no real connection with God. There was no real walk with God. And the church has never changed. But a new breed is being raised up. Hallelujah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're running with my wife and I. That's what we're proclaiming. That's what we're propagating, if you would. That's what we bring into the church. We bring to you the good news. The best news of ever. That it's time to strip the church of everything that's ungodly. And return to truth and the true apostolic life, which will be successful. Then your prayers will be answered. Then everything will work. And all of this is in preparation of this great climax of the ages that is before us now. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Well, I trust you're blessed. Visit our website at GableHamansMinistries.com. Send us an offering. Be part of this. People, be part of this ministry. Now, when I came in 88, my people are like, what's wrong with you? What's the problem? But by 93, 94, it exploded. Our ministry was all over this country, everywhere. And many people would come to those meetings and say, I heard you back in 88. I thought you were, you were crazy. But, but you were saying, what I was proclaiming, what I was prophesying. I want, I want to say this. What I was prophesying to this nation when I came in 88, 89, came to pass from 1993 to 2005. It came to pass. What I'm telling you right now is coming to pass. We are in the 74th year of the last generation. We are standing on the threshold of the greatest visitation of God in the earth. We're standing at the very door of the last day outpouring revival and harvest of the nations of the world. This is not some kind of punchline. It is reality. It is before us right now. I pray to God that you would hear the Spirit of the Lord. That you would rise up with us. And of course many of you do. Hallelujah. We're so blessed by the people whose lives have been transformed by the message that we're bringing. But understand the church at large is still a dark place. Full of Antichrist Christianity. Full of that spirit. But the Lord's going to set them free. But don't wait until the fire comes. Let's go through the transformation now. Let's hook up with Holy Spirit. Let's receive the fire and the passion He has for us. Let's begin to walk with Him. Like I said, this journey of discovery should be the most joyful thing that we do right now. And it is when you really want the truth and you see it and you get set free from the system of works of Antichrist Christianity and you discover the truth of Holy Spirit and how to walk in the New Testament, not the Old Testament. I tell you what, your whole life begins to change. And we know this is happening to people. Father, we give you praise and glory. We thank you for every person watching. We pray, Lord. That you would draw people to the books, to this ministry, to the broadcast. And soon we're going to do more to get it out there to people. Because the time is urgent, but it's glorious. The greatest hour of destiny is on the threshold right now. We're called to it. Let's answer the call. Let's walk with Holy Spirit. And oh my God, let the Lord prepare us for what is to come. 
In Jesus' name, hallelujah. God bless you. I'm going to go. I'll see you next week. Tell people about this program. Tell them about our ministry. Tell them to go to the website, GabrielHamansMinistries.com. Tell them to look at this. We are here for them. If they love the Lord, if they're born again, and they want to be a part of what God is doing, this is what this ministry is about. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. We'll be back. Have a wonderful week. Until we see you next week. Thank you for watching. God bless you.